Okay, so just this week, the founder of BET, Black Entertainment Television, Mr. Bob Johnson, said that the Democrat Party has moved too far to the left and that President Trump deserves some credit for the economy. Now, this statement in and of itself is detrimental to the Democrats in 2020. I'm going to give you three reasons why I feel that way. And also, I'm going to add that there is a way out for the Democrats. In theory, I don't think they can do it, but there is a way for them to actually win 2020. And we're going to talk about it right now. Hi, I'm Kyle, and welcome to my channel where we take culture TV and movies and we filter it right. If this is your first time here, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button and that bell icon so you don't miss any future content. Now, like I said in my opening statement, that Bob Johnson said that the Democrat Party has moved too far to the left. We're going to talk about what that means, but I'm going to talk about the actual interview he did with CNBC and an article by Black Enterprise magazine that talked about it. And that article is right here. And that's him right here, Bob Johnson. And this article is titled, Bob Johnson, BT founder, praises Trump, says Democrats have moved too far to the left. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the first couple paragraphs here and talk about it from there. In an interview with CNBC, America's first black billionaire said that the founder of BT, Robert L. Johnson, weighed in on what he sees as problems with the Democratic Party. The party, in my opinion, for me personally, has moved too far to the left, he said in an interview on the network. And for that reason, I don't have a particular candidate I'm supporting in the party at this time. I think at the end of the day, if a Democrat is to beat Trump, then that person, he or she, will have to move to the center, and you can't wait too long to do that. Now, that's a very powerful statement. That right there is going to be detrimental to the Democrats, and these three reasons are very, very important. Now, let's talk about, first of all, what it means by moving to the center. So right now, we are in a primary season, okay? meaning that the Democrat Party is trying to find the nominee for the party who's going to run against Trump in 2020. Now, the Democrats, as well as the Republicans, have procedures in place and party rules. These party rules include primaries and caucuses. The winners of these primaries and caucuses get people to the convention in the summer to nominate the nominee. These people are called delegates, and they're awarded by the winners of these primaries. So the point here is, is that in the primary season, the candidates, all 24 of them, are gearing their message primarily to Democrats because they want to get the Democrat nomination. So what Johnson is saying is that they need to at some point move to the center, the quicker the better. And I think the reason why he said the quicker the better is because they're so far to the left that they need to start easing the way back. Now right now in the news, we're seeing that Nancy Pelosi and AOC are having some squabbling about immigration and ALC is charging her with racism and stuff. And we're seeing some infighting going on. But the thing is, is that the left wing of the party is fractured. And this happened because after Bush, uh, W, they started to move to the left because Barack Obama started to pull that party that way. Let's look at some articles here. Um, but before I do that, I also want to mention that in order for you to understand, the Democrats and Republicans are the two major parties, but the Democrats have an edge on voter registration across the board. Typically, you see about 33% for Democrats for any average election and 31% for Republicans, usually about two or three points higher for the Democrats. And the remaining 36% is divided among third-party candidates and so forth and independents. And so I'm going to look at an article here that breaks down the voting groups in 2016 and how they shook out. Okay. So this here, it basically talks about how the basic parties, how the different, um, how the race broke down by party race and so forth. So if we come down to this section here, and these are exit polling numbers, we see the Democrat party had 37% of the electorate. So in 2016 on, in November, people who show up to vote, 37% were Democrat, 33% were Republican, the last 31% were independent, okay? Now, 37% is a good number, Hillary got that, 
she won about 80% of her, 90% of her uh, Democrats. But the problem is that's not enough to win a general election. She needed to get those independents and Trump won the independents. So that's what Johnson is saying. And so these, this is what happened. And so when we look at that, that is the primary reason. Now let's go back to the statement. Okay. So he says here, if a Democrat is going to beat Trump, then that person, he or she will have to move to center and you can't wait too long for that. And so what he's basically saying is simply as this, is that yes, you're so far left and now you need to move right because what's happening is as those numbers go down in terms of the 24 candidates that are running, you're going to have to start broadening your approach of a message that's going to actually attract a wider scope of people. That 33%, in this case last year was 31% of independents, you're going to want to start getting that number in your corner. Otherwise, you're going to lose. And so another thing that he mentioned is that the economy was credited, he thinks should be credited for Trump. And that leads into my next point. Because he is a businessman who started his company in 1979. He turned it into a behemoth, a mammoth. It competed with MTV, VH1, all that. And he became the first billionaire, black billionaire, in this country. And so what Bob Johnson represents, in my opinion, is a section of the black community that understands economics, that understands what's going on. They don't buy into the mantra that racism is the big thing, that we have to vote Democrat as if you're black, so forth. But they're skeptical of Republicans. So on one side, they see where the Democrats have failed, but at the same time, they don't trust Republicans. Okay. And so what that simply means is this, is that when Trump won 8% of the black vote in 2016, that number, I believe, is going to be higher anywhere from at least eight, of course, all the way up to, I think, 15. And that piece of that is going to be a large part of it, African-American men. The 8% that did vote for Trump, a huge majority of that were African-American men. And because they see things going on with the economy, with jobs, and because they see immigration as being unfair for blacks because blacks have been here since the beginning, and yet they're being shafted on behest of illegals getting free stuff. And yet blacks are homeless and the crime rates go up in areas like Chicago and all these are inner cities. And yet we're, they're being um, not taken care of, but we're looking at illegals who are coming across the border to be taken care of. That's not fair. Some may see the fact that the unemployment level for blacks are way down the lowest ever. Some may see the fact that you have, you know, jobs are plentiful that, Taxes are low, that just money in their paycheck, that salaries are up. Some may say the fact that even that abortion is being misrepresented and misproported in the black community, that is, is disproportional in the black community. And they'll see that. You know, they don't like the fact that, you know, up to the birth and even after the birth, that, that Democrats are actually in favor of doing that. They see that being a problem. You know, there are um, many black people that see these things as an issue and they don't see Trump as a problem because they were told so much that he was a racist and so forth going in, but yet they're seeing stuff like prison reform. They're seeing him pardoning various prominent people of the African-American community. And you're seeing things going on in the Hispanic community, what's going on there. The Latin, uh, there's two polls that came out this past year, this, this year, really 2019 that have the Latin vote at 50%. And so people are waking up to the fact, and it's not going to be a majority of blacks, but it's going to be just enough to get that number from eight to anywhere as high as 15, maybe even higher. And that's going to be detrimental to the Democrats in 2020 because they need that black vote still to win an election. And so that's number two. And actually, and actually the first reason is, which I forgot to mention, that's number two, the second reason. The first reason why I think that this particular statement is such a, detrimental thing to Democrats is because it's actually true. It's a true statement. And I'm going to go over a couple of um, articles here. I have one here on the Hill, which basically is talking about the Democrat party has moved very far to the left. And it's from a statement from Jim Webb, a Democrat Senator, ex Senator from Virginia. He talks about essentially on meet the press that, you know, th they can't have a, Jefferson Jackson dinner, which is a fundraiser because it's named after 
Thomas Jefferson and Angie Jackson who had slaves. Well, you know, when you cannibalize yourself so much that you are fighting amongst yourselves because you've targeted individual groups within your party, this identity, these groups, where these groups mean more than the actual individuals. If you're a black person, it doesn't matter what you think because you're black, you must think in this particular group. It's a group think mentality. It's what we call identity politics. And if you don't do it the right way, then you have another group coming in called these social justice warriors who will make you known of that and they will shame you and they will shut you down. And that's what's happening now within the party. And so it focuses them to have a message on identity politics. They can't talk about substantive issues because those substantive issues are just too controversial across the board. You're going to make somebody upset no matter what you stand for. And that's the issue. Um, and so he talks about that. We have another uh, Gallup poll that came out in 2015. And this says, so long centrist Democrats. This is from U.S. News and World Report. And they basically talk about the whole thing about how the shift happened under Obama. Um, and it's a Gallup poll, how people are seeing the shift going from left to far left for the Democrats. And that is mostly them doing it. That The Republicans are pretty much staying where they are. And lastly is the article here from Investors Business Daily. This came out in October of 2017. And this is a Pew Research study. It says here, it's official. Democrats are the extremists today. It goes on to say that everyone knows that the country is more politically polarized than ever, but most don't know why. Data from the highly respected Pew Research Center provides a definitive answer. It's because Democrats have moved sharply to the extreme left, not the left, the extreme left, and they can't be far from um, utterly accurate on that statement because they're going to break down various issues and where Democrats stood before and where they stood in 2017 of October at the time of this particular article. So let's take a look at a couple of these things here. It says Pew asked, for example, whether people would have it easy because they can get government benefits without doing anything in return. In 1994, 63% of Republicans agreed that with this sentiment, as did 44% of Democrats. This year, 2017, 65% of Republicans agreed, a two point increase, while just 18% of Democrats did, a 26 point drop. That's incredible. Nearly two thirds. 65% of Democrats used to believe that most people who want to get ahead can do so if they work hard. Today, just 45% of Democrats believe this. Think about this. Less than half, way less than half, 45% of Democrats believe that working hard will not get you ahead. Among Republicans, the change was negligible. It went from 73% in 94 to 77 percent today so those two alone are just crazy if you don't think the democrat party has gone extreme left then nothing will convince you because the pew research study here this is the gold standard for for polling let's do one more how about uh, the question of whether racial discrimination is the main reason many blacks can't get ahead these days well in 1994 just 39 percent of democrats and 26% of Republicans felt this way. That was 14 years before, you know, Barack Obama. It's the f it's 14 years before they first, before we elected a first black president, you have 39% of Democrats and only 26% of Republicans say that racial discrimination or racism is the main reason why blacks aren't getting ahead. Now, after eight years of Obama in the White House, 64% of Democrats say racism is the main reason blacks can't get ahead while only 14% of Republicans do. And that's your issue. Obama created an atmosphere where we're more divided than ever. So if you're black and you can't get ahead, you can just blame racism. That's why we're seeing reparations, you know, being, being put out there. It's being used as a tool to get people to the polls. That's it. That's nothing more, nothing less. And they still need the black vote to get ahead, which is one of the reasons why immigration is such a big push because they see the black vote slipping. We saw it happen in Michigan. We saw it happen in Pennsylvania with Detroit and Philadelphia where the black vote did not show up for Hillary and thus they lost the states. And 
that is the number one reason because it's true number two reason is because the african-american vote is going to be affected strongly because you know the economic piece of it and the fact that uh they're going too far left blacks in general aren't 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 leftists they just vote republican sorry they vote against republicans because they feel that they're racist and they don't trust them but i think with trump being who he is he's he's not really a republican and that resonates a lot with black americans and that's what's getting him over the hump there and i think it's going to be a much bigger pull in 2020 for the black vote in the trump camp the last reason i kind of hit on this a little bit and how the democrats can in theory pull this out and beat trump in 2020 is this is that moving too far to the left makes it almost impossible for them to win i have a video that i'll put ahead here that of why it's going to be very difficult for republicans to lose in 2020 and why it's going to be, you know, just as hard for Democrats to win. I mean, saying the same thing, but I'll leave that link ahead, check it out. But the reason is because when you move so far left, you have to move to the center at some point. The primaries are starting, I guess, I'm not sure when they start, but when they do start kicking in, people are going to start paying attention. They're going to start seeing that these positions that these people have are out of the mainstream. And the more, the closer we get to the election, the less people will be in the race, the more visibility will be on the message. And when you have a president as strong as Trump, we have the economy doing really, really well. We just cracked, you know, another record in the stock market, you know, this past week. You have, you know, his stance on immigration, which is a huge issue, you know, and the fact that he's taking a stance on tariffs with China standing up to uh, you know, um, Iran, and he's showing himself as a statesman. He's going to, he's the first president ever to step foot in North Korea. And, you know, the things he's doing across the board, his optics and what he's doing in leadership way, in leadership wise, is really making him look good. It's going to be very, very difficult for the Democrats with no message to actually combat that. So, what is the way that Democrats can actually beat Trump? Okay? They need two things. Number one, they need to have a message a little bit left of him, you know, just within a Bill Clinton-like message, right? All right? And number two, they need a person to deliver that. And they have to have both. Here's why. Because if they were to have a Clinton-like platform this year, you know, that would totally make their radical left wing, the ALC wing of their party, which is very vocal, very powerful, it's going to make them really, really upset. And they're going to do one of two things. One of three things. They're either not going to show up to vote, or they're going to make a ruckus, or they're going to fight and they're going to break the party in two. Any of those three, it's going to cause, you know, this whole thing to fail. The only way it will work is if they can come alongside with the, you know, the Chuck Schumers of, of the party, the, the Pelosi's of the party, who aren't as nearly as radical as these people are, you know, with the $10 trillion dollar, Green Deal or reparations across the board or Medicaid for all, you know, all this spending, 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 paying health care for illegals. OK, sanctuary cities, all this stuff is not popular with people. All right. But that won't that's just part of the equation. The second part of it is and this is the way it could possibly happen is if they had a super charismatic person come in, like let's say a Dwayne The Rock Johnson, if you were to come in into the race and he would in, so larger than life that he supersedes and swallows up any message that he has that that's leftist. That would allow the left side of the party to come alongside if Schumer and Pelosi, those guys can, can make that happen. And they'll say, hey, just hold your nose and vote for this guy or this gal, whatever, whomever, because we hate Trump so much. We just got we just got to get this person in so we can go forward. We can deal with that problem later in 2024 and so forth. I don't think that the ALC wing of the party is even trying to do that. Their view of this country is so radical, so anti-American that I don't think anything less than having their person in place, you know, preferably be a person of color or, you know, or a woman or whatever with a super radical agenda is going to do it for them. So number one, they're not going to be able to get the party to come alongside no matter what the message is. And number two, if they did have a person who was larger than life that could swallow it up and kind of galvanize, they can't find that person. What person is going to do that? What person is out there that's going to be able to do that? And so those are my three reasons why I think the statement that 
that Mr. Johnson had saying that the Democrat Party has moved too far to the left is why I feel that it's going to be detrimental to the party. And ultimately, I feel that they will lose in 2020 for those reasons. But that's just my opinion. What do you think? Let me know. Do you think that what I said about, you know, the super charismatic person coming in, you know, changing the narrative with a more um, centrist, centrist message will, will work? Do you think they can find somebody? Who would they find? Let me know in the comments below. And let me also know. And so if you enjoy the content on this channel where we take culture TV and movies and we filter it right, hit that like and subscribe button and that bell icon so you don't miss any future content. And as always, please check out the videos that I have above.